All right, guys, so I was robbed on this last trip of a lot of stuff, a lot of equipment footage and everything, and I thought I would just share a little video about that whole experience. But it was on my last business road trip, the second half of the trip. First half went fine. Uh, the second half of the trip, basically as it started, uh, van was broken into, a lot of equipment was stolen. That includes all my camera and video equipment, audio equipment, mics, a tablet, uh, actually two different mic systems. Uh, let's see, Except just random accessories and tripods and lights, uh, light kit, uh, all sorts of stuff. Basically somewhere around $6,000 worth of equipment um, if I were to replace it all, at least the basics. I don't know, there's a bunch of other stuff that was stolen too, but that's like the primary stuff. Uh, on top of that, the worst part is, is I also lost the footage that I had done on that trip so far. That includes a couple collaborations and some other footage too. And unfortunately I can't do anything to get that back. So I'm going to tell you a little bit of what my plans and, and how basically what happened in more detail and then what my plans are going forward, how I'm going to deal with that, how I'm going to handle that. And I just thought I'd share that. A lot of you have asked why not as many videos recently. Um, I posted, I have a couple that I've already recorded that just need edited. Luckily, I still have those. But um, I had to take a little break because most of my equipment's gone, um, at least the equipment I use the most. So this is obviously being recorded just on my phone. And I'm working on getting everything recouped. And then uh, hopefully videos get back uh, into kind of the normal, you know, time frame of how often I'm posting. But anyways, yeah, it was a really shitty trip. Uh, from that regard, the rest of the trip was fine. But I, I'm going to go to the office or something. It's like 100 degrees right now, and Skyler's waiting on me. So uh, we'll, I'll get into more detail. But I got to get out of here. I'm sweating. It's like too hot. So this is me in the future. I want you to stick around to the end of this video after we talk about the whole uh, getting robbed thing. And I'm going to give you an update, a quick update on the store and, and where it's at. I had to kind of put things on hold for a couple months while I was out traveling. But now that I'm back, getting real close. The plan's to open in about four weeks um, from the time of this video. So I'm going to give you a quick tour and show you around and, and the progress that's been made so far. We're getting close to basically just starting to stock it. So anyway, stick around. Get to that shortly. All right. I'm just getting into the warehouse. So I'm outside of the 100 degree temperature right now, but uh, I I wanted to point out a few things here. And yes, it's still a disaster in here. This has not been my priority. But if you look, well, let me get over there. Here, I still have some lights, right? So I still got some lights to work with um, for when I'm doing like demonstrations and tutorials. That's, that's all fine. That's great. I didn't lose like everything. I just lost all my travel stuff. Uh, well, travel lights and all of that, plus all my mics and cameras. <laughs> so... Yeah, yeah, I guess I lost pretty much everything. But long story short is I, I can get by by replacing the necessities and I worry about some of the extra extra things later, like uh, the extra mics and maybe some extra lenses and uh, you know different accessories. Some of them are necessities, some are optional. But at least I've got a few things left. And I mean, we just go from here. So I'm going to head over to... Uh, the store to probably finish up this video. All right, so I'm going to head over there and I'm going to break down exactly what happened or like what I think happened and then uh, my plans, uh, mo a little bit more details of like what I did immediately and then what my plan is, is going forward. All right, I am at the store. I'm sitting down, finally take a break here and get into some more details. So here is what happened, at least I think happened for the most part. This was a trip out west. I'm in Kansas City. I started off going through Albuquerque and then Sedona and then up to Las Vegas for a day, then to San Diego. I was there for several days. And then I went to um, LA, San Francisco-ish area, not all the way to San Francisco, and then back to San Diego and then to Las Vegas and then to um, uh, Utah and then uh, Denver before I went back home. Like 15 day trip. Well, I had done some collaborations, uh, business stuff, the whole first half of the trip. No issues, had everything. And then uh, stuff was stolen and about halfway through the trip. And then I didn't have it the rest of the trip. So I had to cancel a few things after that. And I didn't notice that the stuff was stolen until I was leaving Las Vegas. And now you're probably wondering, how did I not notice stuff was stolen? Well, a lot of people have asked me, don't I just take everything in with me? No. When I go to these you know, these trips and I'm, I'm in a hotel, I do not take everything in. I mean, that was a, it's like a whole van full of stuff. So it's not possible to take everything in. I take in what I need and the rest stays. Well, I I had done collaborations. I didn't need to touch this stuff again for a couple days. And then I went to get the the some of the equipment or check on it as I was leaving Vegas and noticed some stuff was missing. It took me even longer to realize how much stuff was missing. But essentially everything that was worth anything, had some value, was just gone. And it was convenient to take because things are in like bags and, and cases and things like that. So camera bags, backpacks, 
light kits that are in their own case. Very easy to basically just grab a bunch of stuff and load it up and take off. And as far as how it happened, I'm not really sure uh, because I don't know exactly when it happened, but nothing was caught on camera. Uh, unfortunately, the you know maybe a door didn't latch all the way, the back of the van didn't lock. I, I don't know if that's the cause or if someone just jimmied into it. Anyone that was kind of scouring the garage could have easily been looking for stuff worth taking. And if they looked in the back of the van, they would have seen stuff worth taking. So went first to uh, the hotel and created an incident report, checked the security, they looked through cameras. They couldn't, you couldn't see enough to really know when it happened. Uh, it was just out of, like, it's in a kind of a, a blind area, which is unfortunate. And, or maybe part of the strategy, I don't know. Um, and then after that, filed a police report. Um, the police report has been open. I also filed a few other just incident reports from, from like, around the area. I'm also going to start calling pawn shops to see, but there's so many. Like, and a pawn shop's just not going to voluntarily tell you probably that they have stuff turned in. That was stolen because then they're out the money too. <laughs> so I'm just hoping a police report can do something, but I seriously doubt it. But nevertheless, you got to follow those reports because the next important part of this, a lesson to other candle businesses or any business owners for that matter, is the importance of insurance. So I have obviously filed a claim with my insurance. And to do that, you need police reports, uh, usually incident reports, detailed descriptions. So it's also important to keep track of all your assets, um, serial numbers, if you can, at least all your receipts, descriptions of everything. Try to have a travel log so you know what you took with you. Fortunately for me, I have all of this information. So that does make the process easier. Unfortunately, insurance might help you recoup the, the cost of items so you can repurchase them, replace them. But it doesn't do anything for you in terms of loss of revenue, which I have a lot in my case, and also the loss of footage, which also the loss of revenue. There's nothing that can be done with that. So it's, it's unfortunate. It really does suck. Um, it really ruined the rest of the trip from a business perspective, for sure. Um, it was really hard to deal with because it's really bad timing, too. Um, these these trips are a lot of work. There's a lot of cost associated with them. And then the business part, you know, the, the business things that I do on the trips help pay for the trip. They help pay for um, everything that I'm doing. Um, and it's become part of my business. So when that happened, it really did just, it was just bad timing, it really was. So it's been a bummer since then, but there's nothing I can really do other than do, we do what I'm supposed to do with insurance and reports and just hope for the best. I have repurchased some of the necessities that I need. I'm just waiting on it. But uh, that is one explanation for why I've had less content recently. Um, I just haven't been able to make any other than something like this. The other thing that I want to mention, oh, and, and, and regarding insurance, I'm sure some of you are probably wondering what insurance do I use? Well, I don't really want to get into that. I mean, I'll, I mean, I'll tell you what I use, but this isn't necessarily what I'm recommending. There's lots of insurance companies. And I think your best bet is to speak with a few um, start locally, probably, and just tell them what you do specifically for your business and ask that they cover it. Uh, make sure that they do cover your business operations. Uh, but there are all the uh, online services as well. I go through a company called Indie Business Network, which is really a, um, which is really more of like a guild for handcrafters and handcrafted businesses. But if you become a member of that, they have an insurance policy that you can purchase through it. So that's what I use, and I've never had any issues with them. Uh, but there are other options. I'm not necessarily encouraging you to do that. Uh, there's no, I'm not suggesting that one over another. Just that's what I use. The important part is that you understand your policy and you just make sure that they cover your operations and that you have an appropriate policy. And then make sure that uh, if you have something like this happen, that you know how to file a claim and that you have the documentation you need for that claim. Most insurance companies are going to ask for a police report. They're going to ask for a detailed description item list of what was stolen and the cost to replace or the cost of purchase. So keep your receipts, document all of that. I'm very big on organization and tracking all your assets. Again, if you can have a travel log, that'll make this a lot easier. Um, just, you know, a log of when you travel, what you take. But forget about traveling. That's that's specific to my situation. You might just have a store. You might just have a, a room in your house. You might have a, a storage unit. Whatever it is, try to keep an, an idea of what's in that location. So if it is broken into... Um, you don't have to try to remember everything that was stolen. You just, you know what was stolen. So that's my advice from an insurance perspective and organizational asset tracking perspective. The other thing that I would recommend that I did not do that would have been very helpful is some way to track important or high value items like air tags, for example. That was recommended to me after the fact. Um, and it's a great recommendation. I'm gonna start doing that going forward. But things that would be expensive to replace or debilitating to your business, even if it's just temporarily, I think is probably worth tagging it somehow. 
um, so you can track it. And some devices, some equipment that has the ability to track it anyways. It's not gonna help me this time in this case, but I think it's a good recommendation going forward. I'm gonna be doing that. I would recommend others uh, do that as well, or at least look into it. And then I guess the last thing that I'll just mention about this, and this has been the hardest thing for me, is just, you just gotta realize that sometimes shit happens. And I say that tongue in cheek, cause I, like, I need to listen to my own words, because it does happen. And you just gotta accept it when it does, and then move forward and try not to dwell on it too much. I'm not very good at doing that. Like I said, it kind of bummed me out the rest of the trip. It's bummed me out since I've got back. I, I, I kind of like, I got back and I'm like, I was just so stressed out and frustrated of losing all that stuff. The footage and the work I did more than the equipment. And it's been so frustrating to me that I got back and had a little lack of motivation because I'm like, well, what do I do now? Like, I can't do anything without that stuff. So it kind of put me in a rut for a day or two. Um, I've kind of, you know, I've been getting out of it now and, and, and stuff happens and you just got to, Keep moving forward and have a plan and uh, just, just you know, just got to get through it. I don't know what else to say. You just got to get through it. But some people had already heard something happen through like Facebook, Facebook groups. So they've been asking me about it. So I just thought it made sense to do a video. Uh, but that's why there's been a little less content. I'm going to try to get more coming back soon. I do have some more that I can put out there once I have the time to edit. But honestly, I've been dealing with this since it happened. So it, it's just taken a lot of time just to gather all the assets, the inventories, work with insurance, police reports, all that. It's just absor it's just been consuming. So uh, not to mention, I'm here. Uh, hell, I'll just show you real quick. I am here in the store and making some progress. Well, this is the conference room. But here is how the store is coming along. I did, got the painting done for the most part. Also did this wall, which I love. It's probably my favorite part of the store so far. I did all the flooring. That's been done for a couple months. Like I said, finished painting for the most part. I am still doing trim work, baseboards. Need to uh, touch up all of those. Some more down here, some shelving. Uh, I got to finish painting these doors. Right now they're just primed behind me, so I need to paint those. Those are not, those are really just gonna be storage for now. Been building the checkout counter, which is really just a standard counter system. And then I put plywood on the back as a support so we could have some leg room. I didn't want to counter underneath like right here. So on the back, I put plywood so that I could nail on a panel. And this looks like it doesn't match right now. It's like the only thing that kind of color besides the floor, but everything else is kind of black and stuff. But the shelving that's coming in will sort of complement all that. That's the plan anyways. I mean, we'll see how it looks when it's done. But this is the store part, the conference room, the uh, offices. Everything down the hallways, there's like a few other offices, a couple bathrooms, conference room, all of that. It's going to be like blocked off, rope or chain or something. Store itself is coming along. I still got some more to do. Put in the POS system. Still need to finish painting, touching up all of that. I need to uh, do signage. I need to replace some ceiling tiles. Other than that, it's coming along. So getting back here, trying to get refocused on that is my number one priority right now. Equipment and videos, I'm going to get back to it as soon as I can. So anyways, thank you all for the support on the channel. As always, it means a lot. It, it's means even more now because of the difficulty with everything going on. So I appreciate you guys for checking out the videos, for being part of the community, part of the group, um, part of this whole experience, really. So I, I'm glad you guys are still enjoying videos and staying in tune. So with that being said, I will see you guys on the next video. Hopefully it's a good one. Hopefully I've got equipment here coming soon. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you then.